Well, I was muted for a second. Uh, everybody, in case you're wondering where all this uh, brilliant wisdom is coming from, his name is Brother Nuri Muhammad, N-U-R-I. Uh, he's a brilliant black man, so I'm happy to have him here. Uh, his website is nurimuhammad.com. Uh, also, his books are called Before You Say I Do, After You Say I Do, The Seven Jewels of God, Let This Mind Be In You. If you go to nurimuhammad.com, you can find his lectures and his books, uh, and he's a, a great person to learn from. Uh, also, I'd like to ask everybody who's watching. Uh, I saw some of you made donations in the super chat, and uh, I'm gonna try to scroll back and find your comments because I want to read all the comments in the super chat. I want to say global interest. Thank you so much for your donation. Uh, much good fortune, Doc. Thank you. If anybody wants to use super chat to shout out your business, I will shout out your business on your website. Uh, speaking of that, actually, we are forming a database of Black-owned businesses around uh, around the country. Uh, just, uh, and really actually around the world. So even if you live in another country, you can put your black owned business in there. Uh, if you go to theblackbusinesslist.com, that's theblackbusinesslist.com. You guys know about the black business school. Well, now we've got theblackbusinesslist.com and we wanna list every single black owned business we can find in this database so that we will turn it into a searchable database so that people in the community can search the database and find black owned businesses in their city, uh, whether they wanna find a mechanic or that's or right. A restaurant or whatever the case may be. So we want to contribute to that uh, that whole movement as well. So theblackbusinesslist.com. Uh, there, there, later on, there might be a fee for listing, but if you list now, you can list for free and we'll just leave you in the list in the database for good. So theblackbusinesslist.com. Uh, one more thing uh, before, before we move forward, uh, if you could hit the thumbs up button and hit that notification bell right now. Uh, it's very important that you hit the notification bell because that is how you get notified if we go live on, on this platform. Uh, so hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up button on the count of three, everybody do that. And then write black power in the chat to let us know that you did it. You did it. And it's already done. Uh, so one, two, three, everybody hit the thumbs up button, hit the notification bell, type black power in the chat, black power, black power, black power, black power. That's what we believe. That's who we are. So, that's brother, right. Right yes, on. Sir. so let me ask you uh, one more question about, about the whole situation I, with uh, uh, Tatiana uh, Jefferson. Um, one thing that this case, uh, as well as the, the situation with Voldem Jean, uh, brought mm -hmm. to mind for me was um, there was, a, and I mentioned this to you off the air. Uh, the one time that I went to um, the minister's house to for dinner, I don't know if you know, uh, I, I had a place that was right around the corner from the minister. That did, did I tell you that? No sir, no sir. Yeah, but I kind of, I kind of heard about it. Yeah, yeah, man. We, um, uh, it, it was really funny. Uh, and the, I mean, the place is still, I still have the place, so I guess it's not, but I don't live in that place, right? We have, you know, rental property and stuff, but I uh, I had Barack Obama two blocks down. That's right, that's and right. And Minister Farrakhan three blocks over. And I, I didn't care a whole lot about who lived down there. I was, I, I, I but I had a lot of admiration for the man who lived over here. And, um, and uh, so one day I had the honor of being invited over, uh, over to the minister's house for dinner. And I remember that a member of the nation, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, made uh, a, an argument about community policing, that uh, for our people, it doesn't make any sense that people from other communities can come into our neighborhoods and do whatever they want to do, that they're allowed That's to come right. in and police and, and beat up your grandmothers and shoot your kids and all these things, because because we're, we're not going to their, their neighborhoods and doing whatever we want to do, right? That, that will be unheard of. Mm -hmm. Be that's awesome, right you know for a white woman that would be crazy for a white woman to be in her house <laughs> in, in in a wealthy suburb and have some black police officers come in her house and shoot her in her uh dining you know in her um evening gown so yeah can you speak to uh that community policing idea and have you seen any place in the country where that idea has actually gained any traction i i think just a basic rule that says if you police a certain area you must live within say 10 miles a 10 mile radius of that community uh, what do you think about that? And have you seen anybody really push for this? There are several cities that use that title, community policing. And what that generally means is that they use the same white supremacist, clan minded officers to walk down the street in the hood. But the definition of community policing uh, in its highest expression that we present is the men of the community that would be willing to do police work for a living should be 
hired and the tax dollars that are generated from the environment that they are to police should be directed to pay them the same wages that you pay uh, the police officers that are killing us. Mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of brothers that claim GD, they claim vice Lord, they claim crip and blood. They, cl they claim four corner hustler. They claim BD G there's a lot of, there's a lot of the soldiers out in the field that if you came in and said, brothers, would you be willing to submit to a training in a boot camp run by retired black police chiefs and retired black police sergeants and retired black men from the military to teach you how to police your own neighborhood? where instead of you having to be out here hustling and gang banging, we'll give you the same $33 an hour that we give the little white dude around the corner that's been killing your aunties and grandmothers and your cousins all this time? What you think? So community policing would be, we have tax dollars that we generate that hires our own training and brings these retired black chiefs and retired black sergeants of the military and put them into a setup where they train the brothers from the neighborhood that they grew up in to become the police of that neighborhood. So with the truest expression of community police, and there's none that have been willing to step there with this artificial, with the same white boys on a horse coming through the ghetto, calling the community policing, it's happening in many major uh, cities, including the one that I live in but it hasn't stopped the racial profiling. It hasn't stopped the unjust arrest. It hasn't stopped the uh, killing of black men, women, and children by police officers under some, some assumed threat that we offer. We, we, we know how to defuse a situation when you come from the culture and the environment that's the same as the brother that looks like he's out of pocket. We know how to, to make that happen without an incident. So that's the highest level of community policing that was presented. And uh, God willing, we're going to make that happen in the very, very near future. That's the safest and the best remedy. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, it takes the brother that's out robbing and hustling and makes him the steward of his own community. And he makes money doing it and he knows everybody and knows the people in the environment because he came from the environment and we'll see a whole lot of uh, death stop in our community when we can do it in the highest form of community policing. All right. So everybody who's listening to this um, and uh, let me, let me first of all acknowledge, uh, thank you, Karen, for your donation. She says, love you, Dr. Boyce. Keep doing, do, keep doing you. Yes, ma'am. That's all I know how to do. But, so thank you for your support. Um, I want to uh, ask you all this question. Uh, give me a yes or no in the chat. Uh, do you agree with what Brother Muhammad just said? <clears throat> do you agree that the police in a community should come from that community? Yes or no? Give me a yes or no <clears throat> in the chat. Um, uh, I want you to be intentional about uh, what you walk away with from these conversations. Give me a yes or no. Do you agree that police who police our neighborhoods or really any neighborhood should come from that community? Okay, I see a lot of yeses that are going through. All right. So what you remember, I, Dr. Boyd, do you remember whenever whenever we were coming up, they used to have uh, what they called an officer friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally it was a black man in a black neighborhood that came to the black schools to develop a relationship with the children in a neighborhood. And when you seen him, he would come see you at 9.30 a.m. in your kindergarten class, give you a sucker. And then when you were on your way walking home, he'll be walking through the neighborhood at 3.30 p.m. checking on you. And that, that kind of policing uh, was, was much more effective. The, the fact that when you look at the origin of police officers. It started off as those that were overseers. Mm. In fact, if you say the word overseer fast, repetitively, you will end up saying the word officer. Your mouth will already fix it 
really officer is overseer. An overseer is someone that keeps slaves in check for the benefit of white power. So when mm -hmm. police officers have that origin, you know, the minister said this once, he said, the nature in which a thing or the law under which a thing comes into existence gives that object or thing its nature. Well, if that's the law, overseer, keeping black slaves in check for the benefit of white supremacy, if that's the law that policing came into existence under, then it's the nature of policing. That's why we have the kind of police that, that we have, because they are fulfilling the original purpose set up. Do you know why the, the van that everybody gets thrown in and taken to jail is called a patty wagon? Mm -hmm. It's because the Irish were the number one slave hunters. They hunted down runaway slaves for a living. Mm -hmm. Every immigrant, every voluntary immigrant, should I say, because we are immigrants too, black people, but we're involuntary because we didn't ask to come here. Another show for another time. But all the voluntary immigrants came in and had a hustle. The Irish hustle was capturing runaway slaves and returning them back to the plantation to get funds to stay alive in America as new immigrants. Mm. So Patty Hearst, Patty Wagon coming from the Irish. So the Patty, this is what policing is from. The origin of policing is to mm. keep slaves in check for the benefit of white supremacy. So the whole paradigm has to shift. 